Hello everyone, my name is Brian Tran. On behalf of myself, Shelley Dillon, and Catherine Varaki, I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation entitled, Making Progress Towards Millennium Development Goal Number 5, Strategies for Reducing Maternal Deaths in Resource Poor Nations. In this presentation, we'll be going over the background, skilled birth attendants, access to facilities, the uterotonic mesoprostol, and a discussion section. It has been 10 years since world leaders have convened at the United Nations headquarters in New York to develop the Millennium Development Goals. Their fifth goal, to reduce maternal mortality by three quarters between 1990 and 2015, and to achieve universal access to reproductive health by 2015, built upon the Safe Motherhood Initiative, which was launched in 1987. At that time, an estimated 500,000 maternal deaths were occurring each year, 99% of those deaths occurring in developing countries. The Safe Motherhood Initiative aimed to reduce the number by half within one decade by focusing on the following major points. Ad adequate primary health care and an adequate share of available food for females from infancy to adolescence and universally available family planning. Good prenatal care, including nutrition with early detection and referral of those at high risk. The assistance of a trained person at all births and access to the essential elements of obstetric care for women at higher risk. While the Safe Motherhood Initiative raised awareness of the maternal mortality issue among policymakers and the obstetric community, it fell short of reaching its goal. Twelve years later, an article was published that reported that there had been no decrease in maternal mortality since the time the initiative was created. It suggested we focus on what was responsible for the substantial decline of maternal mortality in Europe and America in the first half of the 20th century, technology to treat obstetric complications. Only one year after the assessment of the Safe Motherhood Initiative, MDG-5, was set. To achieve its proposed 75% reduction in maternal mortality, there would have to be a 5.5% decrease in maternal deaths each year between 1990 and 2015. However, as of 2005, there were still 500,000 women dying of complications of childbirth every year, an estimate that is equal to the one made when the Safe Motherhood Initiative began. In fact, between 1990 and 2005, there has only been a 1% decrease in maternal mortality globally, due mostly to progress in only a few countries in East Asia and Latin America. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the region with the highest level of maternal mortality, progress has been negligible. As of today, MDG 5 remains the MDG in which the least progress has been made, and we are once again asking ourselves why the movement to decrease maternal mortality has stalled. More than 80% of maternal deaths worldwide are due to five direct causes, hemorrhage, sepsis, unsafe abortion, obstructive labor, and hypertensive disease of pregnancy. Of these, all but unsafe abortion can be significantly reduced by providing adequate care in obstetric emergencies. Thus, we are focusing on things that have shown to have a major impact on survival during such emergencies. Specifically, we will discuss the presence of skilled birth attendants during delivery, access to comprehensive obstetric facilities, and the use of misoprostol, a drug that has shown promise in treating hemorrhage in developing countries. Generally, traditional birth attendants, also known as TBAs, are considered to be among some of the contributing factors of positive birth outcomes in developing countries. However, in cases of obstetric emergencies, medically trained professionals need, be, need to be present in order to reduce complications and re improve the chances of a successful delivery. Training these women in obstetric emergency techniques can help reduce maternal deaths in these areas. Without this training, they may resort to interventions that place additional strain on the mother and newborn. TBAs are a prime target population to focus interventions on because they are the preferred type of attendant in rural areas and are often the only type of attendant available. Traditionally, the role of a TBA consists of advising pregnant women on appropriate cultural childbirth practices, assisting with deliveries at home, and advising the women on the use of traditional medicine. Unfortunately, many cultural beliefs can be detrimental to mother and child. Some cultures, such as those in rural Guatemala, believe that any hemorrhaging that occurs during childbirth is good for the mother because it releases the bad blood and is a natural process. Other cultures blame any complications during birth on, the on witchcraft or divine punishment on the mother for being unfaithful to her husband. As a result of these child cultural beliefs, TBAs may not be able to recognize the danger signs or symptoms of life-threatening complications and may not act in time. It becomes clear that training TBAs in handling of such emergencies is vital towards reducing maternal mortality. One particularly effective program was implemented in Guatemala under, under an organization called Central Cultural e Asistencia Maya, or CCAM. It was a program that involved using analogies, games, and songs to train local midwives in safer birthing practices in the local dialect. The program relied on materials that women would be familiar with in their local environment. For example, an avocado was used as an analogy for a uterus, with the meat representing endometrium, skin representing the urine lining, and the seed representing the baby. Just as an unripe avocado was not ready to eat, a baby under 9 months is too early to be born. Such ideas were reinforced with songs and, and interactive games. Future TBA education and intervention programs can 
be modeled after the one used by CCAM, incorporating local culture into, into the curriculum and keeping participants actively involved in the education process. When it comes to complicated cases that require skills beyond the scope of what a TVA has learned, it is essential for a woman to seek a health facility. This requires easy access facilities. In developing countries, there are numerous obstacles to reaching a facility. One study formulated three phases of delay. Phase 1 encompasses the scientific care. Phase 2, the actual delay in reaching a health facility. And Phase 3 comprises the delay in receiving quality care once a woman is at the facility. There are many factors associated with the three delay phases, namely health-seeking behaviors, distance, and cost and quality of care. For example, phase one is when the woman or family decides to seek a facility. This is influenced by health-seeking behaviors based on the culture and knowledge of the woman and family. In addition, before the woman even leaves, she will consider distance, cost, and even her previous experiences at the facility. In Guatemala, there were facilities set up in convenient locations, but they weren't utilized because these facilities were understaffed. According to UNICEF, in order for a facility to provide basic emergency of sexual care, it must have the following seven signal functions. Comprehensive facilities must also be able to perform cesarean sections and provide blood transfusions in addition to this list. So how can these barriers be addressed? It would entail creating a linkage between local TVAs and community facilities along with central hospitals, financial support to lessen the burden of hospital and transportation fees, and training of local and community healthcare workers. Mozambique has shown to be successful in implementing an intervention that targets increasing access to care. This study focused on one province named Sofala, which had only 35% of births in a facility. Back in the 90s, the government had a maternal mortality reduction strategy which started with identifying the leading causes of maternal deaths. In 2000, the Averting Maternal Death and Disability Program was implemented with a focus on increasing access and availability of emergency obstetric care and increasing the utilization and quality of care. AMDD has six components, which include improving and expanding infrastructure, human resource development, quality improvement, monitoring, and a referral system in which facilities were given vehicles to transport women who had complications. Then there was also policy and human rights advocacy. There were marked improvements in staff, monitoring, and referrals because of this. The most common cause of maternal mortality is postpartum hemorrhage, accounting for one-third of maternal deaths. Postpartum hemorrhage is mostly commonly defined as bleeding from the genital tract of 500 milliliters or more in the first 24 hours of following delivery of the baby. Postpartum hemorrhage is prevalent in developing countries where high multiparity, prolonged labor, fibroids, and severe anemia are common. The leading cause of postpartum hemorrhage is uterine atony, failure of the uterus to contract after childbirth. Multiple studies have concluded that the best way to combat PPH is to practice active management of the third stage of labor. This involves three basic procedures, the use of uterotonic agent within one minute following delivery of the baby, delivery of the placenta with controlled cord traction, and massage of the uterus after delivery. Of the three components, giving a uterotonic drug within the first minute of birth has the greatest impact on preventing PPH. Oxytocin is the preferred uterotonic agent and is the standard uterotonic used in developing countries. However, it may not be the drug of choice in developing nations because it requires a very specific storage, handling, and administration. It must be stored at 15 to 25 degrees Celsius away from light and once it is mixed with IV fluids has a shelf life of 24 hours. Additionally, it must be administered either as an intramuscular injection or through IV drip, in which the drug should be mixed with saline, dextrose, or lactated ringer solution. This requires that the birth attendant be trained and qualified to administer the drug and have a supply of clean needles. A viable alternative is, is misoprostol, an E1 prostaglandin analog that is registered for the prevention and treatment of peptic ulcer disease, but has also shown strong uterotonic effects. The prostaglandin is inexpensive at about one US dollar per dose and can be taken orally or rectally. It also does not require special storage and has a shelf life of several years. Both the International Confederation of Midwives and the International Federation of Gynecologists and Obstetrics have recommended the prostaglandin as a viable alternative to oxytocin in resource poor countries. In a study conducted at four primary health care center areas in the Karnataka state in India, a group of pregnant women received either oral prostaglandin or oral placebo. TBAs undertook the delivery administration and of the drug and measured blood loss. Overall, the study concluded that the prostaglandin reduced acute postpartum hemorrhage in women in rural India by nearly 50% compared with placebo. Another study in rural Indonesia utilized TVAs to identify pregnant women, distribute the prostaglandin, and counsel the women on how to administer the drug themselves. It concluded that the prostaglandin was safe, 
feasible and acceptable for home-based and community-based distribution where skilled care is unavailable. Ideally, to prevent obstetric emergencies, women's health must be improved overall through health education, nutrition, and prevention and treatment of chronic infectious diseases. However, all these interventions are long-term and costly. In contrast, a focus on obstetric emergencies will have an immediate effect on maternal mortality. By focusing on the components that directly influence survival during delivery, we can make both an immediate impact on maternal mortality and a lasting impact on women's health overall. A fully functioning health facility can provide adequate training to TBAs and can also provide training for the proper use of misoprostol. Alone, TBAs, health facilities, and misoprostol will not have much of an impact on maternal mortality. These three are all interrelated and can work together to help save lives. And this concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for your time.